the Jim Irsay band, Hurt. This next song, is he covering Cash? I think so. Uh, hopefully, I can finish He himself is it. covering. Is, uh, is he? Like, is he the singer? Sales, I think. Yes. Of course, he's the singer, Kyle. No, not Johnny Cash. I want to hear Jim Irsay. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Jimmy! <laughs> what do we got now? The, the, the first question, Reed. Hit us No bag. It. We mm-hmm. want to know, what is the worst instance of trying to look cool and it instantly backfiring on you? This is from your personal life. Bo, you want to – do you have anything? I got one that's okay. I don't know. You remember when we would do pregame warm-ups in Philly, Chris? We kind of end it. We do a little pass rush move on the uh, on the goalpost there, and then <laughs> yeah, right before we would run over. Thing. Yeah, and then we would always run over to do like one on ones or something right after that, which is on the other side of the field. And for whatever reason, part of my routine, I want to show off my ups. I would always like hit a pass rush move, a little club rip action. And uh, then, like, jump and act like I was dunking on the goalpost. And it was sweet. I thought it was so athletic. Big boy. Getting up there. You, there could you this... touch the goalpost? Hell yeah, bro. I was dangling from that bench. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but in reality. Go on. I'm picturing this right now. And there was one game where I, like, could not get up. Could not even fucking touch the bottom of the goalpost. Didn't even try. Missed it completely first try. Reloaded <laughs> the jump and jump from two feet like I was going to just flat-footed dunk. <laughs> And missed it again, and then just jogged off. In front of, like, Biz You just thought you didn't try hard enough on the first time. (laughs) Yeah, that's the problem. (laughs) Just set my feet. All the famous people are down in the uh, end zone where the D-line warms up in Philly, too. So there's, like, pressure to look cool. Mike Trout was not amused. No, Mike Trout. Nobody is cooler than an NFL player pregame. Our guy, DJ Premier. (laughs) You haven't got beat yet? Yeah. Like you're yeah. just out there styling and profiling. Yeah. yeah even no though minuses. Feels I actually pre-game. feel I, honestly this is a good topic because I feel terrible in pregame. Really? Yeah. Dude, I always felt like I was like, um, I don't know, uh uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything's too tight, white. The clothes are too dry, my socks are perfect. Like, you know, I feel weird. I'm not Tordal hasn't kicked in, maybe that's why. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, just thinking through it out loud. But I, I go in and like just pour water on myself because you never know if you have to poop or pee. Like you're like, man, what is this weird sensation? It's just your nerves. You're nothing. Like, Am worse. I about to shit my pants? Nothing worse than having to poop during a game. Ugh. I mean, nothing worse. Yeah, you got to get it. You got to get it all out. Yeah. I've Can't seen guys them. just go. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> watch men poop? No, I'm saying just they just go. <laughs> <laughs> they just let it happen. <laughs> they just let it happen. <laughs> Uh, you've definitely played with a guy who's shit himself. Yeah, game. for sure. Uh, accidentally, you know, you see that spot. You start seeing spots. Yeah. And dots. Okay, so in middle school, there was one day where mom or dad couldn't take me in, so the <laughs> were going to drive me in, and, and I found this out. <laughs> this is a great family across the street. I knew I was going to ride to school with <laughs> girls, and I was all fired up, and I was like, you know, what do I, you know, what am I going to wear tomorrow to school? I mm-hmm. must have been sixth grade, fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And dad was like, you got to tuck your shirt in. I'll show you a trick about tucking your shirt in. You can tuck your shirt into your underwear and it'll never come out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when I got out of the, the carpool line at, at St. Anne's, I got out and my underwear must have been like six inches up out of my <laughs> pants. And I think <laughs> was like, hey, Kyle, you should fix your shirt. He did. He was like, let me show you how to look cool as he loads you up in the car with a mullet. He was doing and fucking he was doing underwear his, up to your third button. He was doing his best. Yeah, he was like, "I'm trying to do me a solid," and I must have fucked it up. There must have been a technical error on my end. Go in there and quote Howard the Duck, which we watch <laughs> constantly at our house. All the other kids will know Howard the Duck. I couldn't even quote that. You always reference Howard the Duck. Uh, for, fuck, we were watching it, dude. You were older than me, though. Yeah. Okay. A little bestiality going on in that one. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Shame too. She was a real dime. There were some bad cartoon characters, though. We've talked about this on the pod. Scary? Scariest cartoon character? Let me tell you about the scariest cartoon character of all time, Kyle. The fucking Puss in Boots uh, <laughs> wolf. Really? Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. If anybody's seen Puss in Boots, as a grown man, I was afraid. But I think it's hype. Spoiler alert that, that they didn't end in like a battle royale. One of them loses. Like they, Death was just like, all right. I'm yeah, out. he just left. Yeah, he was yeah. like, you're right. Yeah. You're cool. Yeah, he's just a yeah. spectator. 
But those scary. blades he had were a little scary. Everything about that fucking scary. Wolf was Sid. Scary. Sid was a scary cartoon character. Uh, yeah. Looking cool. Looking cool. Uh, wearing white shorts to the combine because I thought it would look like faster, and then you could see my balls on TV. <laughs> yeah. You know, almost a Chris Jones situation. <laughs> Just it's a game of inches. Yeah, <laughs> meters in some cases, yards. <laughs> uh, your metric system. Yeah. yeah. I've been out of out of country. <laughs> the sirens go. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> Holy Bo, shit! Bo, what'd you have? <laughs> How'd I look uh, out there? Oh, I got a lot of these, Reed. I could go on and on, man. Embarrassing moments you try to look cool and you failed. Yeah. I got another one for you. This was probably homecoming dance 2007, which was like my sophomore year of high school, right? And. uh this is the big dance. This is the first one. You know, you ask the gal out. You kind of do it a little whole elaborate scheme to ask ask her out. I had a girlfriend at the time. I had like a movie made. We went to a movie and uh, played like a, a thing that like was like a slideshow. I put together. Whatever. Anyway, we went to the dance. My pants were a little tight. I went to hit a dance move and I split them from fucking crotch to like belt of course in you the did. back. And my balls I mean, like, were flopping course. around. Everything like that. Of yeah. course you That did. was boxer shorts, not like Lululemon undies. That was yeah, like, like the shorts. loose old boxers. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, talking the about? Worst, like the, the, the worst. Stiff, the worst. Like the Walmarts. Ones. Just any kind. Yeah. Just the yeah. style was That's terrible. why I avoided them. I free balled every day. You're such an innovator, dude. Yeah. Well, <laughs> My longer. balls were out the dance floor. I got sent off the dance floor by yeah. a teacher. <laughs> Name the most exploited in individuals. This is off the Michael Orr story. The other oh, day. yeah, yeah. And, Bo, what's your take on this? So I went on a deep dive into Michael Orr this week because, like, Good. this has been a hot, hot topic. And I feel like, well, first of all, the twoies are all getting shit on. I was on a Reddit thread recently in, like, our Memphis or whatever. Everyone who's, like, served them ever in Memphis is just absolutely shitting on this family, which is so fun when you see, like, someone – kind of get canceled to hear all the all the stories come out of the woodwork and just follow along um but i think it's kind of pretty obvious that you know michael orr has been exploited right can we all agree on that do we any hot takes around yeah. here no. no no hot takes. not educated enough. i'm trying to figure out why it take him so long to get a will done because they probably asked the question about finances and all that stuff and they probably got to the bottom of something i don't know the details but yeah you want to get a will he's exploited yeah big he's time ex he's exploited um, yeah, but so I went into a deep dive into like Hollywood accounting, right? Because the big uh, argument here is that like you know since they had a conservative sh conservatorship over Michael Orr, like he hasn't seen any proceeds from like the royalties of the movie, okay? And apparently, basically what it boils down to is all these big Hollywood uh, firms like cook all the books so that none of these movies are actually profitable. So everybody is saying that. You know, the Tui family, um, they're, they kind of haven't even really gotten paid for this movie. And maybe, perhaps, it's just a publicity stunt from Michael Orr trying to promote his latest book. Oh, he's got a book coming out. He's got a book coming out. You know, so generally, that's kind of the somebody has a here. book coming out. They all got 12 grand, <clears throat> I read. Yeah. 12 grand. One-time fee. One-time payment. Yeah. What, the family for yeah, the Yeah, like, movie? here's a check. Thanks for letting us use your name and likeness. And this is a family that the dude sold his, like, fast food empire or whatever in the area for $200 million. And also, the, I think the funny part in this is when the movie came out, SJ, the son, he was, like, I think he was, like, 15 years old or 16 years old. But they portrayed him as, you know, like a 10-year-old kid. Like, oh, they got this great relationship. Big kid, little kid, right? And SJ at the time was mad that they, like, why they portray me like that? That's lame. It makes and sense. The, and the parents were probably like, yo, shut the fuck up. Hell we yeah. just got some money. Shut your ass up. We're getting the bag. Yeah. You don't need to be complaining right now. Uh, SJ has well, a point, though. <laughs> Most well, at, exploited. At least they didn't per, like portray him as getting 1% and 2% on all of his like, fucking standardized testing. And 99% uh, on the <laughs> often standardized tests of protectoral instincts or whatever the fuck it was. They were like, that's a bed. <laughs> what? I didn't see the movie. They were like, "This is your room," and he was like, "What's that?" <laughs> <laughs> like, That's a badge. It's like, "Come on, dude." 
yeah. Leave Michael Orr alone. No. So with Michael Orr, who are some more? Who are some other exploited uh, individuals? I, I got one. So a dude who is world famous in history, Nikola Tesla, is exploited by our guy Elon Musk. Right? Like he named his entire company after. Some, You're on to something, Kyle. I, I just I'm always. Yeah, I would understand why if I was a kid now, I'd be confused about who invented what, who did what. <laughs> Elon Musk, the great inventor. Yeah. But all this stuff is pretty much just bought and sold. The the technology and the information that, that he has bought over the years, I, I feel like it's somebody else's ideas. How about sweatshop workers? Yep. Well, you you really trumped me there, Chris. <laughs> I'll go no, slaves. No, 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 I'll no, go I, the slave. Okay. <laughs> slave population. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Um, horses, horses. That's cute, Chris. I'll go the planet Earth. Oh, <laughs> this is good, clean exploitation. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a whole long list, boys. First of all, Kyle, I'm pretty sure Elon Musk did not start Tesla. I think he exploited the founders of that's that. That's what company. I'm saying, bro. No, like. He fucking bought the company from somebody and then kind of like iced them the fuck out. So, yeah, like Nikola Tesla. All the black exploited. musicians that Elvis exploited. Speaking of, Chris, funny you mentioned that. Taylor Swift exploited by Scooter Braun for not owning the master recordings of her first six albums, which is why she's re recording them in Taylor's version. That's oh, wow. awesome. Very I think that's topical. Such a power move. Such a power move. That's one. I also, uh, I mean, I have, I have a long, I mean, we could say any sort of child actor, right? I mean, I feel mm-hmm. like that's kind of Macaulay Anakin Culkin, Skywalker, Drew Barrymore. Like we could just go on and on. Child there. soldiers, especially the ones. In, Chris is um, getting dark today. Yeah. Remember <laughs> the good, movie? Buddy? Remember the movie Soldier with Kurt Russell? I'm just he was not, exploited. I'm tired. I'm not very funny. I just have uh, to say real things. Uh, like. Chris, we we're just saying I'm a Taylor Swift, and Chris is like the natural resources of the continent <laughs> of Africa. <laughs> yeah, diamond miners. It's like our American exactly. team, though. Like, yeah. you know, Sweatshop know. workers, porn uh-huh. stars, yep. college athletes. <laughs> it's yep. like yeah, it's like our fall America's team thing. As Kyle said, coal the first, miners. <laughs> the first month of the season, Kyle thought it was like legitimately just America's teams. He was coming in and just picking the Cowboys every week. Adam Shine kept telling me how much he loved my America's team, <laughs> and I'd be like, "Why? It's just a list of teams." He's like, "What you're doing is brilliant." And I was like, "Dude, yeah, I'm not doing what anything. are you talking about? I'm just picking." I kept America's being like, teams. "What are you talking about?" You know, America's teams like uh, it's like fucking the Cowboys some D three school that I don't know is doing some cool promo at the stadium that went viral. It's, and then at the end of the season, it turned into Kyle picking the the you know worker down uh, down the street, yep, the guy yep. working on the uh, yeah, he <laughs> swung all trash the, trucks. He swung yeah. all the all the way the other way. Yeah, yeah trash trucks. <laughs> Great show, by the way, for kids. Trash truck. If you've got young kids out there, there's low sensory t- television options now that aren't like Coca Melon. <laughs> put on this show, Trash Truck. It's chill. Coca Melon's high sensory. Yeah, put on Trash Truck. Okay. I got no a more still exp- photo of a fucking trash truck. No, it's it? a kid, a trash truck, a bear, and a raccoon, and they're buddies. Okay. And they just do shit. Okay. Is it in in an NFL locker room as your teammates, you know, people you play with, is it easy to tell who treats it as a job, treats the, you know, being on an NFL team as a job or who loves, actually loves football, wants to show up to work every day, play some football? Yeah, I think it's easy to distinguish. There's a few uh, distinctions you have to make, like real versus fake, tough versus not a tough guy. Like some guys act like tough guys. They're not tough guys. You're around these guys all the time. Um, And then there's some guys who are so passionate about the game that their play and their preparation stands out head and uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah. Um, You know, and then there's just physical freaks that can show up and get it done on a whim. Right. Uh, I feel like that's that's the real distinction is like who's just a freak that's getting by. That's a really good player. And who's putting in that extra stuff to be great because they love it, not just because they want to be great. Like some guys love football. And I think of Luke Keekley. Yeah. That's the first name that comes to mind. Like play, yeah, playing a against a guy machine. like that, he loves football. Or like Brian Cushing, steroids, but guy loved football. 
Jeff Scanino. I named two white linebackers. Fucking guy. That sounds Here's bad. a guy who really loves football. We're going to do NFL grids later. London so, Fletcher. But like a guy like Jeff Scanino who played, nobody's ever heard of him. He played 20 years. Oh, I've heard NFL. of him. That's my fucking idol, dude. That's a nose guard that played for fucking 20 years, and then now he's a coach, right, for the, the commanders? Uh, coach, I don't know where he coaches. We're still working the, on the name there. The people in St. Yeah. Louis rave about this guy. They Huge say he used to live calves. in the, uh, in, in the day. yeah, biggest calves of all time. Check out his calves. in the facility. Yes. 20 years, man, and nobody's putting him in the Hall of Fame, but he loves football. Here's my red flag list. Okay, do you wear issued gear to the mall? You might not like 100%. football. You might just like being on the team. That's a right? great point. We had a guy in St. Louis who uh, wasn't on the team anymore and kept his issued gear and was doing a signing at Walmart. <laughs> That's <laughs> low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. exploitation. That's exploitation. <laughs> Does the person say he wants to be a cat in the uh, combine? Obviously, mm -hmm. if you say that, you don't cat love football. Cat or dog. Um, is he artistic? Stop. Can't, we can't have that. Okay. Did Martellus like football? I mean, he's swinging samurai swords and shit. I'll put my coach hat on. Keep talking. Really you might him. convince me of something here. <laughs> <laughs> is your name Johnny Manziel? <laughs> Maybe you don't like football. That's I never Johnny like football now. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have brought up Martellus. He loved football. He the, the guy did love football. He loved football. He just loved a lot of but things. But I'm saying if I was a dumb coach, you know, that I just uh, – because there was a time when they were like, this guy's into too much. Yes. It's not that long ago. When a guy who was on Twitter and active on Twitter was a threat to your team chemistry. Yeah. Like now everybody is <laughs> the on The guy everything. likes social media like every other human on the planet. Yeah. I feel like there's a him. turning point, though. Like, there's guys who, like, they love football, and then they just become disillusioned, disgruntled vets slowly over time. That's what happened to you me. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're looking at three of them right here, yeah. boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love ball. I mean, like, there, there's dudes who showed up – and ball is all encompassing. It's it's uh, from the minute you hit that silver door at the front of okay, house I don't hall. Love ball. But it's like from the minute you hit the okay, well, then that, you don't. If it's all encompassing. Then I don't but love like ball. if if you're in the morning but meeting, you also, hold on, Chris. Yeah, if you're okay. in the team meeting, yeah. and I can just look across and you just look like you know destroyer of worlds yeah. or whatever the fuck Oppenheimer was yeah. talking about. <laughs> there there's other guys who are like on the edge of their seat for every word that the coach is saying, and they can't wait to deliver on the message and yeah, but I meet think, those. I think loving ball is more complicated than liking meetings. But it's meetings. It's eating uh, in the cafeteria with your boys. Is it's, it working out in the off season? Yeah, it is. Okay, did you love ball? I loved going to the spring workouts. <laughs> okay, we, no, I'm talking about working out. Yeah, I did. Oh, it was the only time that I would be able to like be in my best shape was during the spring. I know I didn't have to play I'm on Sunday. I'm presenting a counter argument. There were things that you didn't love. There were things like, like injuries, lifting weights, like or... it, like injuries yeah, for yeah. the most part that made everything uncomfortable, including you, nobody lifting likes weights. injuries. But that's really the only, if you couldn't get injured, I would say. Oh my God! Like some there's of the nothing most, I don't like about some of the it. most ball loving players I ever played with hated <laughs> the shit around ball. They just wanted to play football because the impediment to playing football is the five walkthroughs. It's the six individual periods. That becomes it's a the, bitch. I want to go to inside run. If you, you jog know? from individual to inside run, you love ball. Oh man, then I love ball. <laughs> I'm rock hard. I needed for this it to shit. warm up. <laughs> I needed it to warm up. Who loved ball more than anybody that you played with? I mean, Roquan Smith loved playing football. Yeah. When, like when I got to play with him in Chicago, yeah. he was just a missile and he was, he just brought such great energy. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's hard to replicate. I mean, that whole group when we were playing well loved football. I think it's Brand always a little Brandon guys. Graham. I feel oh, like Brandon BG. Graham loved football. Watching him. Remember when he was on kickoff? Or you, that was probably before you got to Philly, Chris, but watching him shit talk people in between plays and like watching him go like fucking juiced up before running down on a kickoff as like a 270 pound bowling ball defensive end. I mean, Oh, um, 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 he wore his football pants into work. Like exactly. I'm on. He was he would, ready. He, to play would, football. Wow. he would football. come into the lock, come to the locker room at 6am change full hat, like full pads from the waist down to the meeting yeah. room at a guy named Corey Chavis, who you guys might know, but mm -hmm. maybe not, um, was a great vet and a guy that before there was like film that you could take home, he had a, a DVD wall, like as high as the ceiling stretching one wall to the other. 
and it wasn't just our tape. It was everybody in the NFL. He had profiles on every player. He could tell you where everybody went to college. Like it was, he had a photographic memory. Like guys like that love football. Guys that love to grind tape, like Howard Cosell in a football player's body. That's the that those are the football junkies I love. They really entertain me because when I do this job, like I'm doing it because I do love ball, but I just like bullshitting and we chose to do this. When it's time not to watch football, I'm fine. Like I really am. You know, at the end of the season, when everybody's like, What are we gonna do the next eight months? Like, you know, it's out. like a, let's have a contest to see on Twitter who likes football the most. <laughs> There's plenty of you're things tr- to you're do. True look, about that. Look outside, man. So there are limits to my love of ball. I think the D line and O line alumni association makes up the people that love ball the most. And especially like when it comes to the old head coaches. Like even you find eighty year old guys that are on Twitter that coach in the NFL for thirty years and they, yeah, they want to break enough. down film all the time. Can't they love enough. this shit. They love ball. You guys talked about uh, some teammates just now. Who who was one of your best friends on the on your teams? Who who was one guy you beefed with? in uh you know in practice and you you just maybe couldn't wait to go you know knock heads the best dude like you know the guy who led led the um i guess led the the church portion of the football team was sam acho and he worked he was a a relentless worker and he's a guy that should have made my loves football list because he really loved football i was Um, with him in tampa bay and i'd be like me and him would you know, go so hard and there would be so much extracurriculars and he would just stand in my face and be like, punch me in the face right now. Because he, he wasn't going to hit me. Yeah, 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 He's like such a good He's guy. He's a real we beef, But the, my, my best friend slash worst enemy on the Bears was Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks. Yeah. We, we dipped out of the same can every day. We shared locker space. Ooh, you guys dipped out of the same can. You know, he'd, he'd walk up and get some from me. I'd get some from him the next day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we had that kind of working relationship. Uh, <laughs> but, man, I'll tell you what. Practice, when you line up next, when you line up across from him and he's got murderous intent and you do as well and you're both healthy, especially early in training camp and you're yeah. trying to establish, you're trying to get your feet in the ground, so to speak. It's the first day of prison. Oh, buddy. It's like that. It's like that. Akeem Hicks, It's no not doubt. really, because there's some people that take shit too fucking seriously. I'm not saying it's prison, but it is like the first day where everybody's just sizing some each other Some days we wouldn't get dip because we just wouldn't talk after practice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'd be like, man, I could use a dip, but I don't want to talk to him today. <laughs> and, like, in the yard, usually you got to worry about a little guy coming up to shank the big guy, right? Yep. But the two biggest guys are like, nah, we're at rec time. We're going right out by the, the barbell, and we are going to fight. I'll meet you between the, the hashes, bud. Yep. They're going to have to, the guy on the tower is going to have to actually fire a shot. And that's what it was like, I heard, with you and Akeem Hicks. Um, and I was talking to Jay Cutler about this recently. He was somebody, we were talking about you. And somebody said, yeah, you like to get in a bunch of scuffles over there. And uh, Jay was like, yeah, there was this one in the indoor and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, that's the one with Nate Collins. Yeah, probably. And Jay said it was. Yeah, Nate Collins. There's another one where the whole O line jumped in. We all got kicked out. Practice ended early. Let me tell you about my fucking mortal enemy on the practice field. <laughs> Ryan Jensen, Tampa Bay. Oh my God, bro. Kyle, you know how it is when like you're you're pass rushing during practice, like, oh whatever, then oh turn and run to the ball. All right. He's the kind of guy who like grab you, under punch you, grab you under your uh show pass, and then just do the most annoying fucking shit. Like, you turn around for the ball, shove you from behind and stuff Stop, like that. Dude. And then he's, I was he's... always so annoyed because I'd be walking around Tampa and I'd be like, hey, are you Ryan Jensen? Like, you look like Ryan Jensen. I'd be like, no, I'm not fucking Ryan Jensen. Yeah, the worst is when one of those guys signs with your team yeah. and you're like, fuck, every day is going to be hell. But we had Harvey Dahl sign. He's a tone like setter guys. type guy, you know, where it's yeah. just like, dude, we fucking get it, man. It's fucking Thursday of game week. Like, yeah, I we got it, you. Bro. I understand. Like, I'm fucking – so, yeah, that's mine. And that's a good, great player, really good player, great center. God damn, we got into it. We got into it in a joint practice when when I was in Philly and he was with the Ravens. And then, like, we like we were fighting on the field. And then they he signed in Tampa the same year as me as a free agent. It's like, oh, shit. It's the fucking worst. <laughs> what up, was man? that walking across him in the locker room like when you guys saw each other's beautiful uh, faces? Was- uh, we were cool. I mean, you know how it is. It's all good in yeah, the locker room, like, man. You but know, like once, you, once you're on the field, it's like, fuck. Sometimes the temperature's not too comfortable, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. It, it wasn't quite like that. No. It was all good. Speaking of good guys and bad guys, across, you know, the, the films, um, you know, pop culture, or even in history, who are some 
notoriously known good people that should be bad. The example uh, came from the Sandlot, how Scotty Small should be, he's known as a good guy, but he should be bad because he didn't know who Babe Ruth was. He didn't know who S'mores was. He took the Babe Ruth and Yankees signed baseball, yeah. used, to, used to play baseball. Quite who are good resume. guys that should be bad? Cody Maverick from Surf's Up. Dude, without a <laughs> doubt. You guys know Surf's Up, right? I just saw it. Okay, first he leaves his family on the iceberg without saying anything. He just is like, I'm gone, doesn't say a fucking word. Then he steals, well, he doesn't steal Big Z's necklace, but he throws it in the ocean, right? And then Big Z's trying to teach him how to make a surfboard. You know, he's uncoachable. He's really just all about himself, and he's the protagonist of the movie, and I'm waiting for a part at the end of the movie where, like, they bring it home and he, like, changes, but the end of the movie is just like, yeah, he's still an asshole. So Cody Maverick, cartoon characters. Yeah, I'm thinking about the uh, the little s squirrel chasing rodent from Ice Age. Yeah, not great. Man, not yeah. not a lot that's good there. No, no. <laughs> no. Uh, Henry Ford, talk about global warming. It's hot as fuck in Charlottesville, Virginia, right now. That's ladies true, and gentlemen. Yeah, okay. that's true. Yeah, Henry Ford. Henry Ford. But actually, most people were like, if you really look hard, anti semite. And yeah, the, all the well, other we've stuff. canceled him before. Yeah, but. I think we canceled him on this show. I got one for y'all. Jackie Chan, beloved actor, not oh. a good guy, oh. not a good guy. I did Hold a little deep phone. dive into this. Yeah, look it up, man. He's a huge supporter of the Chinese Communist Party. I'm not about that. Also, a notorious <laughs> adulterer, philanderer, um, has uh, a. Just a bad father. He's got an estranged daughter that he does not keep in touch with. Yeah, but what about the one he watched a movie with and she was crying? That wasn't her. That was a fake daughter, bro. No. Fake daughter. Yeah, yeah he's a bad guy. Bad guy. Jackie Chan. Bad guy. And remember, um, what was the girl's name from Rush Hour he was looking for? Also, domestic assault. Imagine being domestically assaulted by Jackie Chan. Dude. Yeah, dude. Death not by a thousand paper cuts. <laughs> You think you could beat up Jackie Chan? I'd smack the taste out of Jackie's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I don't know. Prime Chung. I don't Lee, even though. know what philander philanderer is, but he is one. Prime Chung We're Lee gonna might get, get after you. him. Prime Prime Chung Lee might get you. Kumite, Kumite, Kumite. Yeah, let's do it. If Life's you've watched uh, Say by the Bell, Zach Morris is actually he's not a good dude. Oh really? There's a, there's a a breakout um, on YouTube. Uh, it's called Zach Morris's Trash, and it's it's a breakdown of every episode and showing why he actually is a trash person. So like why he actually wants to everyone to cheat on the test so he can get out early and go see this girl, mm -hmm. or he like goes goes and like you know screws over his buddy and all this stuff. So if you see character, yeah, the character, the yeah, 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 not the actor. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and there's Zach evidence. Morris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach Morris is trash, literally. Sugar. How about sugar? Sugar is not a person. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Yeah, Everybody yeah, loves it. You. Yeah. I think the I think the jury's not out anymore. It'll <laughs> kill you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Teflon fans. <laughs> bro, hey, bro, you you know, a lot of people think Teflon fans are, <laughs> is this Hitler guy he's drawing big crowds. <laughs> you can just see the see the wheels turn in Kyle's brain. He comes mm -hmm. out with sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a lot of RPMs. Uh huh. Oh, that is killing me. Last mailbag. You get to be in one band for any single concert in history. Who are you playing? What place are you taking? Uh, what band is it and what show? I'm hot for this one. You ready? Yeah. yeah. 1991 Metallica in Moscow uh, in front of a crowd of one. Point six million people. If you ever look up photos of this, like they they took aerial photos, it's incredible. And then there's this video of them doing Enter Sandman. That's fucking unbelievable because the USSR had like just been disbanded. I'm not a history guy, Kingston, so you can maybe back me up on this. But 1991, Moscow, James Hetfield. It's probably a fucking top five crowd atmospheres in the entire history of humankind. Look it up. It's pretty. Sick. I just saw a picture of it. It's insane. Yeah. Imagine the energy in there, man. Imagine trying to prep crowd noise like that. In Moscow, dude. Dude, where all the, the, yeah. They ran out of blow in Russia. <laughs> yeah. And, Fresh and out of the USSR. Of cocaine shortage in, in Moscow. Moscow. You know, OJ's great in those Avis commercials, but I don't know about him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Chris. We're on the last one already. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I would want to be maybe a, a backup singer on the, the Woodstock 99 tour with DMX's Rough Riders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> playing in front Wearing of... Wearing loose leather Playing clothes. in front of 200,000. Yeah. Kyle just yelling, stop. Barking. He had the... Je- I think he yeah. had the jean yeah. overalls. He had one, one of them undone. Mm-hmm. Yep. He had the Tims. Yeah. There's the short overalls, too. That's a fit, bro. Buddy, Rough Riders was a, was a, was a vibe. More for than a suburban a white teen. More than a vibe. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood poster on the wall. You had that poster. I had that the, was dark. I kind of fell off, though, uh, and then there was X. That was kind of his massacre, if you know what I mean. Big 50 guy. Um, you know, and then it just became like, uh, uh, oh, here's my answer. Uh, probably Greg Allman at the Fillmore. And, like, you know, he's about to play Whipping Post, and he's like, this, this is all from first album. And then it's just like fucking <laughs> wicked whipping posts. It's like one of the greatest recordings of music of all time. I mean, just how casual that motherfucker was out there at the Fillmore. I'd like to be, I'd like to be there. I'd be, I'd like to be one of the Almond Brothers. Or uh, Future when he played at the NFC Championship or something. What did he play at the divisional game with the Niners? Remember Ooh. they had him play pregame. What was the halftime show where they had all those those '90s hip hop artists out there? It was oh, all God. the New York artists, maybe? Um, yes. And they were all in like a, a moving tower. It was 2020. Yeah, that yeah. that 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 was sick. I don't know. I don't know. That was say, not, but I do yeah, because Eminem came out like halfway through and everyone lost their mind. Eminem and Dr. Dre, and he had that big piano. Okay, I got two. This is this is from me. These are two mailbag questions from me. Um, okay, firstly, did you guys see the Messi thing? I don't know if uh, Bo's seen it, but basically Messi, somebody caught on to the fact that the first guy that gets off the bus is his bodyguard, the guy with him, like at all times. And, you know, that's easy to track. But then you watch TV, and this guy's all over the pitch. He's up and down the pitch, and it came to light because Messi last night got bum-rushed by a fan because he's so wildly popular, and the guy's, like, right there to interject. Uh, I think it's incredible to be so great at your sport that you have your own bodyguard. Like, I've had teammates with... He's a water boy distance away from Messi at all times. All times. <laughs> you know, Tom Brady had the the nutrition guy. You know, that was about the weirdest thing I've, I've ever experienced. It wasn't weird. Like, he was he was pretty <laughs> low-maintenance. Uh, it was weird. It was weird. He said it. It was weird. But it's, de- it's definitely not something that's normal. I'll say Chris, that. Imagine being married to the uh, most well-known supermodel of all time and getting massaged to bed every night by your nutritionist. Hold on your, a second. He makes a good shake. Your sports. So I'm a nutritionist guy. away. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So, anyways, um, love you, Meg. The fucking, uh, she's not listening anyways. At all. When we had uh, Kevin O'Connell on, she was like, Bo, she's like, who'd you interview today? I was like, oh, head coach Kevin O'Connell. I was like, yeah, same draft class. She's like, what do you mean? What kind of draft class? I was like, oh, draft class. Like, we were in the same, he's 38. And yeah, we, went kinda, to, we were in Nam together, Meg. <laughs> yeah, but you kind of, yeah. You kind of looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? You know, that kind of thing. Um, by the way, the Kevin O'Connell interview is great. I know you probably already listened to it, but, uh, Twice, but tell yeah. your friends. Oh, yeah. So the question was, uh, who are the best bodyguards of all time? Yep. And I've got a list of three here. Great. Um, the baby's bodyguard. We, yeah. we know that. <laughs> yes. The, the baby, the rat. Fuck. That guy is a tank, man. He's we, as big as a door. Bro, I did get, get the license plate on that truck, and I looked him up on Instagram, and he's an incredible human being. It's I mean, Kane, Kane, right? Yeah, Kane Kong? Kane Kong. Kane Kong. And he put, us on, uh, he put us on his story. We put a social about him. He thought it was funny, which is good, because I don't want to anger the fella. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, also, uh, oh, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> In the movie with the uh, the yeah. fake gun. In the line of fire. In the line of fire. The thing about this, a lot of people are like Kevin Costner, bodyguard. The movie speaks for itself, but no. Frank Farmer, no. bro. No, I say no because Kevin Costner didn't have to worry about a fake gun. It's really hard to spot a fake gun. And Clint Eastwood not only spot, spotted the fake gun, but he got in front of the, uh, the fake bullet. So uh, my last is uh, Kyle Long for Jay Cutler. Good shit. Yeah, well, Good that shit. was a lot of fun. It was quite an honor. What was that like? Man, being being Jay's guy in that locker room um, was crazy. And then you go out to dinner places, and everybody loves Jay. He's like he's like an anomaly, an enigma. Um, and he's got that personality that everybody wants to know more about. So they're like, I want to go talk to him. I want to mm-hmm. go talk to him. And Jay just wants to hang out and have a good glass of whiskey. 
and yeah. have a steak. His peacoat game is He'd incredible. give me that look like, handle that a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I took pride in being like, no, nah, not tonight. Maybe one of the, tomorrow one of the night. two best-dressed white quarterbacks I've ever seen. He's sharp. Uh, Charlie Whitehurst is one. Jay Cutler's two. They're sharp. Yeah. But being his bodyguard, did he treat you well? Did people come he, after Jay a lot? You know, we didn't have many issues. Okay. And and you know what? One thing Good I'll say answer. about Jay, there was always a there was always a plate at his table for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and so he treated his bodyguards his well in, in that regard. He yeah. did. He he, he said were whiskey basically... for my men and beer for my horses. You were definitely like his staff, bro. You like lived there with with Kristen. No, right? no, no. I didn't live there. Basically, I was down any, the street. Anytime I Facetimed you, you're over there. You were like the, the guard kid in the neighborhood that wouldn't that wouldn't go away. You were like. Can I play, Kristen? It was what, fun. What he also cooking? pulled me. Out, he also pulled me out of a lot of shit on the field. Like yeah. he'd be the first guy to grab me by the back of my neck and pull it out. There's yeah. pictures of him yanking me off piles. Yeah, yeah, I like the guy. Okay, so those are your bodyguards. Yeah, those are my three. Okay, uh, I'll go. Bo, number one, eugenics, Frank Thomas. He is a bodyguard. I would imagine that on eugenics, Frank Thomas is even more physically imposing. I, than he this was is kind of like your America's team. I like this. <laughs> yeah, so I like where you're going. I was actually thinking about him for worst ads. Okay, but best it, bodyguards. Yeah. Uh, number two. Okay, that didn't get a laugh from anybody. So. Well, no, because it's it's kind of not. It's not where we were going. This is but where it's funny. Your stuff. Do you mean eugenics? Yeah. Okay, eugenics is a eugenics totally is different. A, thing. Eugenics, eugenics is a very, is a, very is different a practice, thing. Yeah. Uh, New which, yeah. which they eliminate certain really? ethnicities. Oh, really Jesus dark. Christ. Yeah, <laughs> really <laughs> dark. Okay, no, I'll start again. No, I like eugenics, Frank Thomas. Stop. If you, Stop. If you, you think about Stop. eugenics, Frank Thomas, you think he's just, he's got these, <laughs> he's, you got, hey, somebody doesn't like you, you eugenics, Frank Thomas is your body. I wrote down He just devises Frank plans Thomas. to get rid of everybody. You know? They call him the he's big He's like longer, <laughs> bigger. <laughs> <laughs> my wife loves it. Yeah. That's what he says. In the, he's like, I mean, I want him. Does he have a lab coat on? Now I'm mean, sweating. Eugenics <laughs> <laughs> might be the best thing that was ever said. Marius Pujanowski, oh. <laughs> who was not only a world strongest man, as we all know, but he also fought in in the cage yeah. a couple times. So yeah, yeah, yeah. he he's form meets function. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's kind of the best of both worlds. Doesn't speak English either, so he can like say whatever in, in his native tongue. He could just bark at people. Uh, Is he a genocide guy? Number three. <laughs> number three. We're getting we're getting to that. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh huh. Because I feel like if your bodyguard, <laughs> if your bodyguard has bodyguards, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like a cheat code. Yeah, that's like every bad guy in a John Wick movie. How hard is it to get to the main guy? The guy with the metal teeth, the fat guy he beat the shit out of in John Wick 4, it's just all, it's, took a beat. I haven't beat seen it. John Wick 4. I, haven't, <laughs> I, don't even, I didn't even get on the train for John it's Wick It's over two. now. Is it? It's over. Somebody just needs to kill him in the middle of John Wick 5. They kind of leave, <laughs> like leave you wondering. Um, um, oh, same thing with the Hemsworth <laughs> movie. It's hard to get to the, the main bad guy. The bad guys have bodyguards, and the bodyguards have bodyguards. They're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Denzel. Mm, man on fire. Yeah, man on fire, except he lost her. But did, did you obviously didn't watch the end of the movie, though. Well, he got her back, but if, if that's my kid, I don't want to lose her. I'd like, I'm, if I'm interviewing build character. people... I'm gonna be like, do you plan on losing the child? And yeah, before and, you and you'll make get it, it back. about you, and you'll get it back before you make it about you and make a movie about you. <sighs> Look what I did to cover up my mistake. And he died. He did die in Training Day. It's like Flight. It's fucking, which is a just superior. <laughs> He's movie. a liability, but it's dude. like, oh, the movie's all about Denzel and it's all about his character. But he fucking crashed the plane because he was drunk. He was He's hooking like, up King with Kong one of the hottest flight me. attendants I've ever seen. Is that how it happened? I never watched it. Yeah, he was drunk from the night before. Then oh. guys flips the plane over, and they're like, oh, good job. It's the same thing with Man on Fire. Uh, the black dude who swam across the uh, the lagoon. <laughs> yeah, that's a great bodyguard. This guy's basically a Navy He's SEAL. Committed. <laughs> He's so committed, dude. Uh, how about uh, Jokic's brother? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, in sports, there's, you know, that's your enforcer right there. Chris, that's I got good. some good ones. Okay. Frank Farmer, you mentioned it a little bit earlier from the the movie The, Bo the Bodyguard, obviously. Yeah. obviously. Not not as much of a bodyguard, uh, more of a lover, really, which is kind of, that's the exciting part for me. Um, here's the other one. The T-800, Terminator 2. Nice. Yeah. Bodyguard. 
Yeah. An elite bodyguard. Yeah, Come great on. Bodyguard. Not a John... T-1000, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not quite. We're cutting hairs here. Pro- protecting John Connor. Fucking, you know, becoming human slowly in the process. The little cracked smile he does. Ugh, what a scene. My no favorite, bo- my favorite bo- bodyguard, though, is uh, the private browser function on Safari. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The delete button. Incognito mode. Clear exactly. Search history all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like it never happened. You want a day worth or a week's worth? I want everything. I want to be the guy at the incognito mode air traffic control center. You know, I want to be the guy at the Google Air Traffic Just Control Just watching Center. files fly like, across. Like, wow. <laughs> like, people are into some sick shit. It's like Minority Report. I told you. The other day, I was th- we were talking about how to dispose of a body. I couldn't Google it because I was afraid the guy was going to see. Uh, I read that a lady... Call, in, he'll call that in. I read that a lady in Florida killed her roommate and then doused herself in Mountain Dew to <laughs> get the <laughs> DNA off. <laughs> her mugshot is just like... <laughs> <laughs> Like Baja Blast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, diabetes. Yes, no. Now, you know, like fucking uh, Mountain Dew has got 70 grams of sugar in a fucking Sugar bottle. strikes again, man. Yeah, it's, that's sugar. We got to tell people about this thing. <laughs> it's in everything. It's in everything. <laughs> this, uh, this upcoming NFL season, the Colts are going to have um, John Mellencamp, Stephen Stills, and Jim Ursay's band. I fucking love this. As the starting, as to welcome everybody, you know, kick off football season in Indianapolis. What other famous people do you all know that have uh, have bands, have musical talent? First off, what other famous people do you know that are this powerful and famous in sports that are such a fucking good show? I mean, this guy is must see TV. He runs his own Twitter account. Just saved a whale. Guitars, saved, saved a whale. whale the same week he wouldn't pay the running back. So everybody was like, <laughs> so everybody was like hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> the whale. Like, Fuck Wait, hey, what are you doing with the whale? <laughs> Saquon Barkley's right there. You know, Jonathan <laughs> Taylor wants fucking, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how he's doing it. I laugh so hard at people I just when they get mad at him. They're like, oh, I got something. Somebody woke up. And the fucking aggregators, they know what they're doing. Let's let's just bait these stupid motherfuckers into having a take. <laughs> and, you know, here's Jim Arsay and a whale. It shows like a whale on the back of an 18-wheeler. Yeah, because that's how he got Arce's it there. Face. They had a whale on top of a private jet. <laughs> yeah. People were like, hey, you know, that's not fair to running backs or the whale. <laughs> or, or the CO2. <laughs> <machines>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You need to put the whale under the plane. <laughs> I mean, these fucking idiots out here. I, I, you know, during the season, everyone's going to be bitching about flying coach like to their far games, you know, yeah. the West Coast trips. Like, God damn, flo- fly a whale out, but we, we're sitting True. in the back with the GAs and shit. Wait till you hear Support fucking staff, how much right? money Daniel Snyder paid for hookers. <laughs> You're going to be really mad about the running back thing then. But they're was also being thing? exploited. Was that his thing? Whales are being exploited too. That was actually Jim Mersey's kind of a genius. He's saving the whales, man. <laughs> he's like 20, well, uh, he's 20 if, years late. He, on like if he wanted to go raises. full Twitter on people, what he should have done was, oh, you care more about the running backs than the whales? Yeah. <laughs> What's the Get shelf your life of your stuff. average whale versus your average running back? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds. Right? Hundreds of years for some of these whales? Some of these whales. There's a shark that's like 800 years old I saw the other day. Basking shark? He knows Greenland some shark? Probably a Greenland. He's seen some Greenland yeah, yeah, sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know my sharks. 268 nah, years. Bro. 700 years sounded a little bit fucking Lord of the rings this, Kyle. <laughs> you, you read one of Bo's books. Shark. <laughs> Longest life. It's a Greenland shark. That was like a colanth or something like that. They may live over 500 years. Who, Greenland sharks? Yeah. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean 1,000 or 700. They Kyle. may live they would have said over, over. They would have said over 600. They years. might have said under 550. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, Jim Irsay, I hope he lives to be 700 years old. And I hope he never sells the team. Just because, you know, it's fucking, he does stuff like this. This is, again, it's like Putin and the hockey team. We have a connection to this concert, yeah. by the way. You know, you're out there Steven skating Stills. next to Sergei Fedorov. 
<laughs> he's like, yeah, Putin, you know, throw throw the puck where I'm throw the puck where I'm going to be, not where I am. <laughs> you know, the lounge. And Putin's out there just fucking missing shots and shit. They they're doing a free open net. They're doing an open net thing. They're doing a fucking. They're doing a, a penalty shot. He, they're like, you you take it, comrade, and he fucking just whiffs. <laughs> It's the same thing. It's like I'm, when he does the MMA stuff, he beats people up. And yes. they just let him beat him up. <laughs> yes, They're exactly. Like, the oh, bears no. are letting Putin climb all over, <laughs> over <laughs> in Russia, dude. You think about it. Castro used to dominate basketball games in Cuba. Oh, I bet he, he was a He looked like a big fucker. Chris Paul, you got something in your eye. It's Obama. <laughs> You've seen some of these baseball players from down the way. They're big. Dude, if fucking, if fucking President Obama came to Eagles practice, as much as I, <laughs> I think the guy's a solid guy or whatever, I would fucking I would snap him in half. <laughs> he might like that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What in the name of Breitbart are you talking about? Uh, I know what he's talking about. Yo. So a, uh, President Obama had a former lover, and he said something in a letter like he had imagined having sex with men. Every day. Undressing men. Every day. In his mind. Is this uh, uh, you know, a source that we can... This is on New York Post. Oh, New York Post. Okay. <laughs> no That's clue. why I asked if it was... If it was uh, I just if, left it at what I left it If it, it was uh, Gundy, if it was Mike Gundy was the columnist or something. <laughs> One of these OAN guys. I'm a man. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, that's I, it's cool. Hey, whatever you're into, man. Anybody who likes football does Lincoln, the same thing. Lincoln, speaking of bodyguards, Lincoln had a bodyguard that, according to some website on Google, said that he was rumored to... Wasn't the only cherry tree he was chopping at, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's the wrong president. <laughs> <laughs> he was an honest man. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when Jimmy Carter got capped in that fucking Cadillac. Hey, yo. If you're a football fan, you fantasize about men daily. No, on it, no I mean, like, uh, they said Lincoln. He had a bodyguard that Lincoln would, uh, they'd sleep in the same bed to stay warm, which makes sense back in that day. It was day. cold. It was cold. But they said, you know, there was more than uh, body heat. That's just dedication to your craft from the bodyguard, though, you know? Yeah. I know how cold it is in Washington. I, there was a picture of me in a locker room, and it was super cold in D.C. <laughs> I would imagine in the winter months it would be even yeah. colder. You didn't see when when Washington crossed the Delaware, he was naked surrounded by bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the, the hull of the boat was taken on water. There were so many naked bodyguards up there. What the fuck are we talking about, huh? Here we go. Presidents. This is great. We just keep talking presidents. You want to go Jefferson? No. <laughs> well, Macon's not here. We can say whatever we want about the guy. He's like a Jefferson purist. Kind of a shit bag. Not Macon, but TJ. So um, back to Ursa, do you want to hear some music? <laughs> yeah, I want yes. to hear some yes. music. music? And right. then I want to hear James Dolan's music, too. This is, this is Jim Urs the Jim Ursa band, Hurt. Is he covering Cash? I think so. Uh, hopefully I can finish he himself is covering you. Is, he, like is he the singer? Else, yes. Of course he's the singer, Kyle. No, not Johnny Cash. I want to hear Jim Ursay. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Jim! <laughs> The boy got soul. Hey, only an addict can sing this song like this. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, 100%. <laughs> He's got a good fit, too. A black cowboy hat, some black sunglasses. Sounds tired from chasing that dragon <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm kind of speechless. That was great. Radio I mean, good. it's amazing yeah. what, what uh, studio equipment can do. I'm not. I, I'm not saying he's probably not good, but... That's better than he probably is. And that was a live performance, too. That was, he was up on stage. Oh, that was, that was live? A, that was a live wow. performance. Yes. Jim Mercer is a musician. Okay. He's a renaissance man. Fuck yeah, dude. Does everything. Yeah. Great. Great music. Now yeah. do we want to hear James Dolan? I want to hear I James heard, Dolan. I haven't heard this yet. Nick I'm rip, this is JD in the straight shot. Glide. Who's Who's this? James, James Dolan. Dolan. Who is that? Yeah, and you uh, it's the fucking owner of the Knicks. And, you know, uh, what I told you earlier, he's the guy that made me 
I used to be really passionate about the Knicks, and he made me stop being passionate about the Knicks, but he did this really interesting thing where I didn't know it was his fault. I just <laughs> thought it was just happening. I was like, this is natural. But it's not. It's, it's James him. Dolan. Told Oakley he can't come to the, the garden. He's the NBA's Oh, I remember Dan that. Snyder he fan. kicked out a, a, an alum. He's the NBA's Dan Snyder, exactly. Big budget for strings, huh? That reminds me of the Boston police officer. Did you see the Boston police officer go down that slide? <laughs> they, need to, they need to set the Boston police officer going down that slide to James Dolan's <laughs> Ride That Slide. <laughs> that, no comment on the quality of the music, but if you haven't seen that video, can you pull the video up, Kyle? You haven't seen this video? I've seen the video. It's one of the funniest videos it I've ever seen. came out of a wormhole. Bro, his face. <laughs> his little Boston face. <laughs> <laughs> when he came out of that. His little minute man. <laughs> like a leprechaun got shot out of the wrong fucking. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw a video of a kid sliding down at a half a mile. That an was hour. the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two days after, they were like, this was my kid last week at the same thing. This was my kid and his dad. How does that happen? <laughs> Test the slide. <laughs> He almost he almost gun butted himself. <laughs> <laughs> he came up in the fetal position after he got off the ground. He got oh. up and tased himself. Bro, that fucking. I feel terrible, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they made. Oh. Make him read read the Miranda rights to the medical specialist. How do you get upside down? <laughs> like you have the right to a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't go back in. <laughs> hey, somebody else go arrest that kid with a lemonade stand. <laughs> oh. No, honestly, cops have a hard job. This is the hardest part, too. <laughs> they do have a hard fucking job, but this is fucked up. How you draw this assignment is, is beyond me. Like, they, what did they he do? Said, test the slide? No, they didn't test the slide. It, it, I feel like it's one of those, you know, it, it's the feel-good video where the cop goes to the, you know, the neighborhood and he plays basketball, right? Yeah. It's like one of those where the cop went to the park to play, you know, oh, I'm playing with the kids. Oh, I'll go down the slide. And then he gets... And then Udonis Haslam yeah. fouls the shit yeah, out of you. yeah. Yeah, anyways, uh, that does pretty We don't know anything about this cop. No, he probably is a great guy. I don't know, but th this is... It's this... just amazing that in this day and age... Listen, if that was a, if that was a fucking... Uh, he would have been on the Today Show. He should be on the Today Show. If that was a butcher, I'd laugh. You know what I mean? Like Guys <laughs> like that get interviewed on morning television. Yeah. Okay, so, so the question is, what, what, uh, what famous people are actually good at music? And besides Jim Irsay is the question, because... The guy's good at music. Uh, Steve Martin is my answer. Steve, Steve Martin's Martin, ridiculous. Steve Martin is, uh, you talk about strings. I mean, strings. He's got the strings. During and, the pandemic, he would put out like once a month, he would put out an awesome, you know, him just playing banjo. Yeah. Him just ch chilling and playing banjo. White haired Steve Martin? Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. one. That's the one. Okay. Uh, what about, also, Jor what about My Lotta? What about Jordan oh, Mylotta? Jordan Mylotta is wildly talented. He's so Voice good. Voice of an angel. Voice yeah. of a, yeah. Yeah. An angel. Uh, Kevin Costner and the Modern West. He's got a band. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, do you have any of their jams? Yeah, you put up? I, I haven't heard it. Yeah, this is like free, free press for all these budding musicians. Yeah, because Kevin Costner needs it. Hey, let her rip. <laughs> Here's Kevin Costner uh, in the Modern West. Won't stop loving you. Airy. I still wake up every morning. Is this, this Kevin? Kevin? This is Kevin. You're the first thing He's a natural. Okay, that's enough. It's okay, great. That's it's good. good. He's good. He's good at music. It's not great. It's not as good as Ursa. He's good at music. He's good at music. Ursay's hurt was better. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's it for our mailbag. Bo, it was nice of you to join us. It's good to see your face. Hell yeah, brother. I've been playing NFL Grid, bro, and I've used you like three times. Let's go. Yeah, when you get that grid and you you know, you know see New England Patriots and uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and really nobody comes to mind except for me. Exactly, dude. Exactly. <laughs> the uh, All the other ones are just... 
Irina Shank's boyfriend. <laughs> non interesting <laughs> answers. Yeah.